This is the Momentum Podcast. We hear from so many entrepreneurs that they want to create balance between growing and scaling their business and being present and focused with their family. This is such a challenging position for entrepreneurs because it can feel like putting focus and effort and emphasis on growing and scaling your business means that you're not prioritizing the most important people in your life. This episode of the Momentum Podcast is taken directly from one of our coaching calls, specifically members working with our Momentum Planner system. Through this interaction, Alex is going to help you understand how to get over the guilt of balancing your family and your business. He's going to show you how to create clarity in your priorities so that you can understand where you should focus your time to create the maximum amount of momentum and also where to offload things as a business owner so that you can grow a massive business without sacrificing yourself or your family along the way. I'm Alex Sharfin, and this is the Momentum Podcast, made for empire builders, game changers, trailblazers, shot takers, record breakers, world makers, and creators of all kinds. Those among us who can't turn it off and don't know why anyone would want to. We challenge complacency, destroy apathy, and we are obsessed with creating momentum so we can roll over bureaucracy and make our greatest contribution. Sure, we pay attention to their rules, but only so that we can bend them, break them, then rewrite them around our own will. We don't accept our destiny. We define it. We don't understand defeat because you only lose if you stop and we don't know how. While the rest of the world strives for average and clings desperately to the status quo, we are the minority, the few who are willing to hallucinate there could be a better future. And instead of just daydreaming of what could be, we endure the vulnerability and exposure it takes to make it real. We are are the evolutionary hunters, clearly the most important people in the world, because entrepreneurs are the only source of consistent, positive human evolution, and we always will be. Hi, I kind of hopped in late, um, but I think my frustration is, I, I'm going to be honest with you, the book has, the plan has really helped me, because before, with like how you were talking, how we have this to-do list, right, but it becomes a to-die list, and um, now I, I wake up with an attention because I think that's where I work from. Like, it doesn't serve me a purpose. It's like, why am I doing this? But I think my frustration is like that I'm always been struggling with is because I feel like, I feel like sometimes like I show up with intentions into my business, but then I feel like I kind of go and do these things for my family and cook and clean. And by the time I get to my business and all these intentions I had, I like lost momentum you know, and I'm trying to find the shift of how do I put these things that like these other things that would not, not that's not beneficial to my business, but it's really helping me grow my business. So it's kind of like, I feel like I do all the housework stuff and plan all that. And then by the time I get to my business, it's like, I'm overwhelmed. And now, even though, even though I have intentions, even though I know I need to do my business, I feel like I just don't have the energy to go. That, that makes sense. I've got a question for you. Are you using the planning system for both your personal stuff and the business? Yes. So, cause, because, which has really helped me where you would say, you know, what are the intentions of like me, like, you know, personal relationship. So I'm, I kind of go through them, but I don't do a huge list because, you know, I'm trying to be like simple, like take 15 minute walks, you know, I'm trying to do that. But I think it's just like, is it okay to flip it around, you know, of like do my business stuff first and then put my personal relationship, like, you know, I don't know how to kind of have that balance. Yeah. Balance is so hard. You know, I don't, I don't like balance. I don't like the word balance and I don't, and and honestly, I, I, I'm very hesitant with any of my clients using balance, but I, but I don't want women to use the word balance because what does it feel like for you right now trying to balance these two things? Well, it's like, I know this much just thing is like 50, 50 balance. I, I know that doesn't exist, but I think balance for me is just making sure my kids are taking care of and everything. But I think right now I just feel like in order for my business to grow, I need to kind of put my business a priority a little bit over my family just right now. And I know that things are temporary. I always say to myself, this is not a long term with my business will always be in front of my kids. This is just a temporary thing that in the road, I need to just need to do so I can elevate to the next level and then create the structure and hire the right people. So I'm not always neglecting my kids. But I think because I step away so much into my, 
I feel like if I step away too much into my business, like I feel like I'm going to neglect my kids. How much of your headspace is this taking up? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, cause, cause I guess I don't want, cause like we homeschool our kids too. And I guess I don't want my kids to feel like all they see is mom just on her business, you know, and like doing things for her business. So I think it's just that guilt thing too, but I know that everything am I doing is with intention. I know that I'm doing things with a purpose and I know that it's just a temporary thing, but it takes up a lot of my headspace. Like, am I doing enough for my kids without sacrificing my business? Yeah. So here's why I asked how much of your headspace is this taking up is because I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs who are moms and about half of our membership, the owners of the businesses are women and a lot. That's of why them. I followed you. That's <laughs> and awesome. I started looking. I was like, okay, he, he, because I was like working with other mentors before. And I'm like, when I tell them I struggle with being a mom, they would say, just do this. And I, it's just like, no, I, I can't just do that. And yeah. I went to read your testimonials and I'm like, a lot of these are moms. I think he kind of gets, and you talk about your daughter and your wife and the balance. And, and I think that's what has attracted me to you because I'm like, I need someone to really understand what it's like to balance a fam- a healthy relationship with the family. And of course, run a successful business, but have that, of course, no one has it perfectly, but just nope. understand where I'm coming from. Yeah. And so first I want you to know something, all of this feelings that you're having, all of these feelings you're having, they're chemical and they're real. Mom's actually like mom guilt is the realest thing on the planet. And guys, we don't feel it in the same chemical way. We have some of it, but it's nothing like what you're, what a woman experiences. And, and this is like scientific backed up the, the chemicals that women experience when their children are in distress are much different than men. And the, the, the guilt, the anxiety, the frustration you feel, all of those things are real. So I want to validate them for you, Shang. And I want you to know that that's, that is, that's something that not only is it real, I'm really like, I'm, I'm impressed with the fact that you're bringing it up on a call like this, because a lot of women won't talk about it. And a lot of women kind of stuff it down and pretend like it's not there. And then it just gets even worse. And so my recommendation in a, in a case like this is to get really clear on what you have to do for your kids and family and what can be done in a different way, and then what you want for your business, and, and put it all together in your momentum planner. If you, when, have you been through the forward planning system yet? No, I didn't. That's why when you were, um, when you were talking about it, I, I need to go through that because right. those are asking deep questions. I need to kind of go through it to really ask me those deep questions. Yeah. And here's what will happen through that system. So the forward planning system first helps you identify where noise is coming from. And then it helps you build into a plan, getting away from that noise and getting to what you really want. And I, it sounds like this is going to be ideal for you. And also um, in the next week, I think in the next like few days, so all of you understand, we're actually adding to the momentum planner. It's in the next few days, right, Deanna? So we're adding to the momentum planner course. Whenever we put out a course, we put out like a draft and then we're like, what else can we do? How do we make this better? Uh, How do we give people more of an effect? So there's two things I think you should do, Shang. First is go through the forward planning system and go through the personal congruency section because it's going to help you get clear about what you want. And what I'm hearing right now is you have competing priorities, but you're really unclear on both. Like, let's get clear on what you want out of both. And then the second thing, and I think this is going to be a big deal for you, is we're putting all of our time study content in for the Momentum Planner. And the reason we're doing that is we believe this planning system will take somebody from zero to multiple six-figure business. And if you have this planning, this this time study content, and here's what the time study content is for all of you, Paige, you might want to look at this too. Um, In fact, I recommend everyone does a time study once a quarter. In fact, as I say that, I have not done one this quarter, so I need to do that. I think we should do it as a leadership team again, Deanna. Um, Every quarter, I carry around paper, and for every 15 minutes of the day, I write down what I'm doing. It sounds excruciating, and it is not my favorite thing to do. Like, honestly, I avoid time studies, even though we train them, even though we tell people about them. I'm like, like, I'm not usually coming up with the idea to do it. But every time I do it, by the third day, I'm like, gosh, I need to do this more often. Because what happens is when you're writing down what you're doing every 15 minutes, you start seeing opportunities. Let me share one with you. So Katie, my wife, 
Um, we run our business together and we also have two daughters. And for a long time, we were having a hard time figuring out food of all things. Like how do we get healthy food? And, or, and she was having a really hard time with it. And so I suggested a time study. So Katie and I did a time study at the same time. And here's what we found out in a time study. She was spending 24 hours a week on food. That's more than a half time job. With, with going to the grocery store, with getting the food, with cooking the food, it was more than 24 hours a week. And so we sat down and talked about it and we added a few meal delivery services. We figured out a way to get food done faster. The kids could care less. They actually love the meal delivery services. And so we replaced about 20 of those 24 hours with getting help. And at one point we even had a private chef. Before COVID, we had somebody come in and cook all of our meals for us. And at our income level, we had somebody ask like, isn't it crazy expensive to have a private chef? We had a chef for about 10 hours a week for $20 an hour. It was $200 a week and most of my wife's work was done. And so that was, that was from going to time study, look for the opportunities and then figure out what you can do to, to, to get the time back that you need. And I think that will help you like crazy because Here's what we realized when Katie and I realized talking down, sitting down and talking about it was what's really important is that we eat dinner with the kids. It's not that important that she goes in there and cooks the dinner, especially if we can get healthy food cooked for us and it's here ready to go. And I'm not suggesting that's going to be the same solution for you, but that was just one thing that came out of that. So I remember Katie did another time study. We both did time studies. We realized how much we were spending on laundry. We have two kids, like between the two of us, I would go in there and switch laundry over. She would go over there and switch laundry over. It was like this huge thing. Then we had our cleaning service come an extra day on Thursdays, do all the laundry, and then we're not doing it anymore. And so a lot of times by doing a time study, you can find opportunities so that you're not doing things you don't need to anymore. And it'll show you an inventory of your time. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, and I think, um, so I, if, you, if you never heard of this, but like that qual, um, continuous quality improvement is called CQI. It's where, uh, like, have you ever heard of it? Oh, I mean, ISO 9000, like, what do, where do you want me to come from on this? I've, I've been through so <laughs> So anyways, like, I try to use, like, because I used to be trained in that. So I, I use that in my life, in my daily life. So that way it's like, where can we cut time? You know, where can we strategically do things to cut time? So, for example, like, we had, a, now we have food delivered because I don't want to go, we don't want to limit shopping. Like, my kids... I make them wear the top, like a shirt to go sleep that they're going to wear up the next day because the pants are in, because the pants are in the drawer. So all they need is pick the pants, but I don't need to pick a shirt anymore. I don't need to go in there. So I'm always looking at like, how can we improve the system? Even with laundry, like I'm always like, okay, what can you do? And it always be Saturday and I will buy enough clothes for them to have seven days of the week. And it's like streamlined, but it's like, great. These are instructions. These are in place. But it's like, I guess I just well, need to wait go a second. through that. Wait a second. I'm, I'm hearing something that I want to point out for you. So CQI or ISO 9000 or Six Sigma or any of those systems. I was a, I was a, a, count, or a counselor. I was, was going to say I was a consultant at Cor in Corporate America, but I should have said counselor because that's what I ended up doing a lot of the time. Um, but I was, I was a consultant in organizations that used all these types of, of systems. And here's what I've found with engineers or people who really understand the system well, is that we apply CQI to the base level of activities, not to the higher level. And here's what I mean by that. What I'm hearing is a lot of in the moment tactics. It's like, I'm doing this to do this and this to do this and this to do this, but I'm not hearing higher level data. And in any continuous quality improvement program, you make micro decisions to change the process, but then you look at the macro data to understand if it's working. And, yeah. and I would suggest to you, you're missing macro data right now. I probably I am because I, I feel like I don't have the capacity to that's what I'm saying I that's why my biggest struggle is like I I think I need to go through this like the the forward and the personal to really get clarity but that's like my, my biggest struggle it's like I'm burning a lot of energy over here and I'm trying to condense it so I don't put so much energy over here so I could really grow the thing that I want to grow you know it's like because I know that if I put time into my business, it's not like my family's going to fall in, like crash and burn. Not it's just all. that I just have this strong, long guilt, like, oh my gosh, like I'm stepping away and they're going to feel neglected, X, Y, and Z. And that's where my struggle is. So it's like, I'm trying to learn of like, 
I think I just need to do what you said. Like, what is it that I, what is that I want out of my personal and what is it that I want out of my business and prioritize that. And like, if those are met, then just move on. Well, and I think you should still consider doing the time study. And here's why I want to see data. I want you to see data. I want you to understand if things are improving because here's how we do a time study. We carry around paper for two weeks. We write down everything that we're doing. At the end of two weeks, we answer a question. Is this strategic or tactical? Like doing the laundry, tactical. Cooking food, tactical. Driving the car, tactical. Like those are things somebody else could potentially do. In a business, um, answering emails, that's tactical for a lot of people. Right now, it might be strategic if you have a smaller business, but once you start growing the business, it becomes tactical. So when you look at strategic versus tactical, we then have data. We can say for this two-week period, this is how much you spent on strategic. This is how much you spent on tactical. Mm. We can come back 90 days later and say, let's look at it again. And so what happens is when you look at like a, and I love how you think, are you an engineer? No, I just, this is how I've always functioned. Okay. So you're just an engineer by birth, not by school. Yeah. This is how I always, that's why I kind of gravitated towards you because you were creating system and you had data and you had this. So I was like, okay, I need system. I need data. I need to yep. see what's working. Let's test it in two weeks. Okay. If it's not working, let's move on. Okay. What is working? What can we keep? What can we improve? Because I just feel, I don't know, that's just how I've always functioned. So here's the new data I want you to have. There's two places where I feel like you need additional data above where you are right now. The first one is the time study so that you can see where you're spending your time. And that's going to give you perspective where right now there's a lot of noise and confusion. And then the second place where I think you need data is on setting outcomes. If you go through the process in our program, like what I was talking about with Nick and Paige, and you create your own personal waterfall and you create the outcomes that you're aimed towards, what will happen is after 30 days, you're going to see how much of this did I achieve? Did I get 40% of it done or 80% of it done? And then in another 30 days, you sit down, you go through the process again, and then you'll be able to see how much you've achieved. Because here's what I'm hearing. You have a lot of micro data. You have a lot of process data. Like if I make my kid wear, wear the shirt they're going to wear to school, it's a lot faster. They just have to find pants. That's, ama that's amazing. I mean, I think that's an awesome idea. I don't think I could sell it to my kids, but um, I want you to have higher level data. Like here are all the things that I committed to doing for the month, not in the moment, in the minute, but for the month. And this is what I was able to achieve. Now, what can I do in the next month? I feel like there's a different level of perspective. Mm, necessary okay. Because there's a lot of focus on the process. Let's elevate above the process to intention and outcome. Okay. Totally makes sense. Thank you so much. Yeah. That yeah, just no. like, that just pushed me to another level. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm glad you asked that question because I don't really think there's a lot of people who coach around like this level of detail and this level of, of like, where do we really prioritize and how do I get out of the obsession around minute to minute process, create a greater outcome that, that will re it's going to reshape how you look at all of that minute to minute stuff. Well, I think that is what I have been missing. That's what I'm saying. Like that is what I've like a lot of a coaching programs been missing. It's like, yes, you teach me how to do it, but I need to know where it like outcomes and measurements, because that is what's going to give me clarity to know what steps to move forward. So that that's why I've been very strategically waiting and learn, but I was looking around you and then that's when you start talking about intention and outcome and data and, you know, all this stuff that I'm like, okay, I can vibe with this because this is what I need to really understand. So I know what's working, what's not working and then evaluate and, you know, do something differently. And like, am I doing 40% of it? Am I doing 80% of it? What's the outcome? What's the reason? So that way it can give me better clarity instead of just more strategies. Yep. And here's my experience. I just want to give you some, like, I want you to have a lot of hope going into this and a lot of excitement going into this, because here's my experience. When we elevate above and we create that level of data where now we know high level outcomes, we know where we're spending our time. You know, what is unlocked creativity. I know that doesn't sound like a direct, like straight through like line, but if you follow the more data we have, the more clarity we have in the present moment, the more clarity we have in the present moment, the more creative we can be and the more we can problem solve. And so for me, the reason that I talk about process, structure, routine, and having data around it is because I have this crazy belief that every entrepreneur knows everything they need to solve their own problems. 
And if we give them the right data and the right system, they will have unlocked cre creativity that will help them solve those issues. I can feel it with you, Shane. Like just some of the things that you've said in this conversation are a little creative. You're the first woman I've ever heard who says, my kids wear the, the school clothes to bed the night before. I mean, that's a level of, of intention and creativity I haven't heard. So I know that as you unlock more, you're going to find more solutions here at a higher level that I think are going to really help you. Thank you for listening to this special presentation of the Momentum Podcast. If you're ready to take the next step, we have a very special opportunity for you. Our team has been hard at work putting together a presentation for how you can grow and scale your business predictably without feeling like you have to do it all yourself. Alex is going to be giving this presentation soon. You can register today by going to sharfen.com forward slash grow to reserve your spot now. Go to sharfen.com forward slash grow.